Welcome to the huddle. I'm Vahe Gregorian, Blair Kirkhoff on my left, Sam Mellinger on my right. The Royals return to Kauffman Stadium today off, of, off a bad road trip, really. They went one and four, they got swept at Yankee Stadium. I think if we remember this right, it's the first time in 22 series they've gotten swept and they hadn't uh, lost as many as three in a row and then they lost four in a row since late last July. I think in the last couple of years, this would um, have made cause for panic or at least uh, over analysis. I don't think we're feeling that way right now, Sam. It, how, does, how does it strike you? Is it just a, a, a lull of a, part of a season or, or more? Um, yeah, I mean, I think every team's going to lose some games. I, I think the Giants lost five in a row at some point last year, and they did all right at the end. The Royals had their May last year, and they did all right at the end. Um, I, you know, I do think that it, depending on how deep you want to get, um, there are some concerns, uh, mostly with the rotation. But I, I, I also think, like, when you think about those things, there are no boats without holes in the right. major leagues. Right. And, and every team's got problems. And, you know, relative to, uh, you know, the teams that they're competing against, their problems are pretty good um, because the, the strengths that they have are maintaining. Now, the, the offense has gone cold a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, and the thing about the Royals, no team looks good when they don't score, when they don't hit. But the Royals look particularly bad when they don't hit because there's, for the most part, when they don't score, it's they're swinging at pitches way out of the strike zone. And that's, that can be frustrating for fans to watch. But I, I do believe that, that this is finally the year where that offense is going up. And it's not going to be, you know, they're not going to be scoring, like I think they were second in the league in runs. Uh, they may still be, but I mean, they're not that good. But they can be fourth. Right. You know, they can be right. fifth. They can be something like that. I mean, they, they've got legitimate good players in the prime of their careers. Um, you know, they're just going through a cold spell right now. It's, that's what it seems like to me, too. And, and I also think it probably seems that way to most fans. I, I don't get the sense, especially if you look at the phenomenon at, at Wrigley over the weekend with the way Royals fans showed up there, I don't get the sense anybody's feeling diminished. And that speaks to maybe a new faith, I think, that's there since last season and the way this season has sort of followed right out of last season. Do you feel that way, Blair, too, that, that fan enthusiasm is, is now a whole – a completely different matter than it would have been a year ago? Well, there's no doubt that the, the fan enthusiasm is, um, well, first of all, it's an incredible levels. Uh, uh, Witness all-star voting, um, all, the all-star balloting, but in every other measure, too, attendance, television ratings, the, the fan uh, reaction to these Royals is, is remarkable. And I think I saw this the other day, too. If you, if you just took their record in the last 162 games, I think it's still the best in baseball. You know, it goes back, it includes the postseason and then the second half of last season as well. So... I think one thing that we're you know we're measuring this uh, against is the hot start they got off to. It was seven and zero out of the box, yeah. and, and uh, they were in first place pretty quickly. And now that they're not in first place, uh, or they weren't coming off the road trip, uh, people are wondering, okay, what's wrong? How do we fix it? Uh, I, I've been really interested in, uh, to hear Ned Yost's, not what he says after the game, but how he says it, how he, how he approaches his post game. Very calm, very measured. Um, you know, he, he's, a co he's a manager that we know doesn't suffer fools, you know, well and can really be combative at times. Us, in other words. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it, 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 like us. Right. But, um, uh, but I think he's just like, calm, Let's, it's, it's fine. Everything's okay. And, and uh, Sam said it well, that everybody's got issues. Royals have fewer issues than most. It's interesting with Ned. I mean, he's about to, in the next couple of days, pass Dick Hauser as the second winningest Royals manager. And soon to follow, he'll, he'll win his 411th game to pass Whitey Herzog. I, I don't know if this means Ned's destined for the Royals Hall of Fame. I, I, don't, I don't know what it means, really, in the big picture, other than it's different than people thought. Yeah. And how much, Sam, do you think just the – image of Ned is different today than, well, even September 29th, uh, mid-game. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's drastically different. I think it's hard to overstate how different it is. Um, I also think the reality of Ned is different. I, I think that, um, good point. you know, not just getting through that wild card game allowed him to sort of live what he had been preaching for a long time, you know, calm, confidence, you know, these are my guys, they're, they're going to come through. And you know, in the sixth, seventh inning of that wild card game, whew, that was uh, <laughs> that was threatened. Uh, that was threatened in a big way. But now, yeah, I mean, he's the manager of the AL champs, and uh, you know, he's got really good players who are on the ascendance. And and uh, so it's a year ago at this time when they had the the really terrible May. What Ned was saying kind of felt like uh, this is the same old stuff, and it's wearing really thin. Um, now it's like, yeah, 
Um, you know, because I, I looked up, I guess it's been more than a week now, but um, the, the last 162, and they, they were 99 and 63, at, you know, out of the last 162. And that's, that's pretty damn good. And, you know, when, when you have, it, it's just the difference between, uh, you know, what you say having some backing and what you say, you know, yeah. just being something that you believe and you want other people to believe it too. And I think it has, you, you started to say this, but it's liberated him a little bit in terms it of how has. he manages, which goes back to Blair's point. So, okay, he's the all-star manager. Um, he can't stock the pond the way they used to just because of the voting rules have changed. Right. But I'm sure there'll be a little Royals touch to this. And as you look at it now, just with the way balloting's been going, who, who are the Royals you, you see as the guys that really should be on this team? And how do you think that'll play out? Well, we, we saw what the first batch of uh, votes brought us, uh, five starters for the Royals. I, I don't think when it's all said and done they're going to they're gonna get five uh, voted in to the starting lineup. But I, I do see – as many as three, I do. Uh, Mike Moustakis is having as good a year as anybody in the uh, in the AL at third base. Lorenzo Cain's lead among the outfielders in the voting yeah. was substantial, and I just think he's such a fan favorite that uh, Lorenzo Cain's going to start uh, for the for the American League. And then Salvador Perez started last year. Uh, now he was an injury replacement starter, but he did start last year, and again he's leading the the vote totals of the the first vote total. So. I can see those three getting starting nods, and perhaps with Ned finding room on the roster for a handful more. We know he loves Alcides Escobar at shortstop and speaks glowingly of Alcides. Um, Hosmer, Alex Gordon, uh, I, I just and then and then Wade Davis. I think is a slam dunk on the staff somewhere. So um, four, five, six, seven. I, is it, there's going to be a lot of blue in Cincinnati yeah. in mid July. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for being with us on the huddle. That's all the time we have. Uh, keep following us, please, though, at KansasCity.com and on our True Blue app. And thanks for joining us.